Hey guys, me again. Uh, thanks for giving the uh, the other video the views that you did. So as a follow up to what was going on in the other video, we all know that it, the um, the commemoration, so to speak, is now being deferred rather than cancelled, like Dublin City Council voted for. You know, so but. I'm not going to talk about that. What I am going to talk about is uh, Fine Gael themselves. Now, not specifically modern day Fine Gael, but uh, if you go to their website, the very first member, the very first founder you will see is W.T. Cosgrave. Now, there are two other people intrinsically uh, connected to the formation of. Um, a Fine Gael, and they are Kevin O'Higgins and Owen O'Duffy. Now, uh, so like I said, if you go to the site, uh, you, you won't see any of this, basically. Uh, and you'll, you'll see why they want to rewrite their own history, so as to protect themselves from history, so to speak. So the head of Common the Gale uh, was Kevin O'Higgins. Um, he was an Irish nationalist represented as a conservative revolutionary. Uh, he defended the Irish Free State and was pro-treaty during the Civil War. Uh, after appointment to uh, the government in 1919. Uh, he worked under W.T. Cosgrave and in 1920 Cosgrave was arrested and O'Higgins took over uh, as the Minister for Local Government. So at this point you're thinking yeah that's okay uh, you know. So Sinn Féin split in 1922 over the terms of the Anglo-Irish uh, Treaty at this time, he completely abandoned his uh, previous stance uh, on the allegiance to the King of England. And in 1922, while running in the election, uh, he basically quoted people, quoted the people to trust evolution rather than revolution in politics. Now he won that uh, he won that election in his area which was the King's County County Offaly and he became Minister for Justice uh, <coughs> excuse me I'm still suffering uh, the Irish Civil War broke out in June 1922 and he between the years 1922, the year 1922 to 1923, he signed off on the execution papers for 77 Republican POWs. And weirdly enough, one of those people he signed an execution order for was the best man at his wedding, a man called Rory O'Connor. So he was a hard ass if he was anything. Um, in the third doll, he was classed with others, uh, such as a guy called Fitzgerald, who I presume would go on, one of his relations would go on to be the leader of Fine Gael. Um, he was classed as a Donnybrook set. Um, these were people who were not very much in touch with the Irish language or uh, militarism. In 1922, he set up Ungarda Síochána, and this is where history um, combines these two. Uh, he appointed Ona Duffy as the commissioner. Uh, so in 1930s. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So, with many uh, 
bits in between there I, I'm just going to skim over I'm just really going to go for um, kind of major things rather than the, kind of the, the smaller bits in the 19 in 1933, O'Duffy became the leader of uh, the Army Comrades Association, I believe. These were to protect uh, Common Gael at public meetings uh, at this time, because I, I, as far as I know, they were being attacked by the IRA. Um, he also at this time embraced fascism ideology and was a huge admirer of Benito Mussolini. Uh, this is where the nickname the blue shirts came from because they he basic they basically um uh, took on obviously colors of uniforms and uh, the the Nazi salute um so basically they were called the blue shirts like after the Italian black shirts and the German brown shirts who were the Wehrmacht who were under the personal control of Hitler um. In August nineteen thirty, or in yeah, in August nineteen thirty three, a planned march on Dublin to commemorate the death of Collins, eleven years previous, uh, forced De Valera to reinstate uh, the Constitution Act nineteen thirty one, the Amendment thirteen, which basically banned uh, parades and public gatherings. But he banned this parade specifically because he was sure there was going to be a coup d'état, and the night previous I believe all the houses of the blue shirts were raided and people were arrested uh, 10 days after this uh, the blue shirts were deemed an illegal organization <coughs> excuse me so if you're beginning to see a trend with something else here uh, please let me know on the 24th of August 1933 Common Nigel and the National Centre Party, of which W.T. Cosgrave was the leader of, approached O'Duffy with a view to him leading a new party, which they called Fine Gael. Now, this is the bit you don't see on the Fine Gael website. Uh, he was the first leader, not William Cosgrave. Now, this is where uh, you might find that they very much uh, align themselves with someone who they intrinsically hate in Irish politics today. So now this meant that O'Duffy's illegal organisation, the Blue Shirts, which were a paramilitary group, had transformed into the militant wing of a political party. Now, just on the offhand, I can't think of that happening in Ireland anywhere, can you? Uh, by mid-November 1933, Fine Gael sought the, reunifica or the reunification of Ireland with the British Commonwealth. So, this was now their stance. They had decided that, you know, and it's still, you know, it'll still be party policy today, eventually. Watch and see. Um, Fine Gael meetings were often attacked by the IRA during this time. And several attempts were made on uh, O'Higgins sorry, um, O'Duffy's life. Um, one point in Limerick, uh, they had misinformed uh, the assailants of what carried being, so he got away. And in Tralee, he had been attacked outside a meeting with a hammer. Now, he was arrested a couple of days later after that, and um, now obviously he was released. Um, so yeah, anyway, during not not long after this, uh, about nineteen thirty four, uh, Fine Gael were losing interest with his his rhetoric of fascism, um, so called republicanism. He was um, completely disenfranchised at this point, more or less. Uh, the blue shirts were basically costing them financially and reputation wise as the election uh, that year I think they'd only got eight seats and Fina 
been a fall of that 13, I believe. I think it was, uh, that I'm nearly sure that's what it was, uh, 1934. Um, he was met by uh, two members um, of Fine Gael not long after this election uh, on the 5th and the 7th of September 1934. And he was basically told, you read carefully structured manuscripts and basically you were told we were going to tell you what to say um to, you know and by the 18th he had retired he had basically just retired now he had already um during this time had ties to uh pro Nazi German pro Nazi um organizations in Germany. Um he had already brought seven hundred Irish people, Irish men over to fight with Franco. Um at the time that didn't exactly work out. Um so Bar I think in um uh, the only good thing coming out of Fine Gael, if you can count it being good, uh, was the formation of Angarda Siakana. Um, but like I said, if you go to uh, the Fine Gael website, which I have done, uh, just to check their leaders out, they basically have omitted these two completely because of their penchant for executing Republicans um and Adolfi's views at the time of um fascism, Nazism, all that type of stuff. So just remember that Fine Gael are perfectly capable of rewriting Irish history as well as writing uh, rewriting their own history. Nobody has seen or probably looked into their own history much. But when you look into Kevin O'Higgins and Owen O'Duffy, you'll see exactly how they were formed, why they were formed, and their core beliefs. And today, they haven't changed much. So uh, that's me over and out, guys. Uh, drop your comments. Uh, debates insults whatever uh i'll get back to you either way um yep mess me over and out guys thanks for listening